Good afternoon. How we doing? Welcome to the SPACs attack. Let's do it, guys. How you doing? My name is Mitch Hotch. I'm here with Chris Ketchy, the brain to the show. Let's go ahead. Let's get right into it. As you guys can see, the SPACs have been going crazy since we've been gone. I hope you guys are welcome back. Had a great Thanksgiving. Definitely want to give a shout out to everyone. Hope you're having a great holiday. So let's go ahead. Let's get into the headlines. What's going on, Chris? What's what's up today? Yeah. Hey, Mitch. Hey, viewers. Um, we've got some headlines going on. We did have a big deal announced this morning. Um, we want to touch on that first. So symbol NGA, Northern Genesis Acquisition Corp. They announced their merger with Lion Electric. So this is one we've mentioned several times on headlines. Bloomberg first reported this rumor back on October 30th, and it's been circulating since then. Lion Electric has over 300 vehicles on the road that have 6 million miles driven between them. They serve the electric truck and bus industries. Their current production is 2,500 vehicles per year, and they have plans to ramp that up. So they have over 300 purchase orders in hand, which have visibility for over 6,000 vehicle sales over the next four year, years. This deal is being done at a $1.5 billion enterprise value. $500 million in cash, which will go to Lion Electric, will help them pursue their growth strategies, which include production ramp up and building their battery system factory. Major customers for Lion Electric already include Amazon, Canadian National Railway, and Waste Connections. And they have part partnered with Dana, BMW, LG Chem, Con Edison, and ABB. Uh, the company has significant first mover advantage with approved models across medium duty trucks and buses. They also have charging infrastructure and telematic solutions in place. They count their total addressable market for medium and heavy duty trucks as 335,000 units a year or a hundred billion dollar market and school buses, 45,000 are sold a year for $10 billion total addressable market. This may become a, a Joe Biden play as well. Uh, in their presentation, they listed the Biden Clean Energy Plan, which calls for 500,000 school buses to have zero emissions by the year 2030. So there's a good push that buses that are sold in the next couple of years will have to be the zero emission models, which benefits a company like Lion Electric. So their forecast from their presentation, so this current fiscal 2020, they'll sell 110 units for $29 million in revenue. Next year, 650 units for $204 million in revenue, which will be a 608% year-over-year increase. And then by 2023, they see units ramping up to 7580 for the year for $1.67 billion in revenue. And in 2024, 18,400 units sold for $3.63 billion in revenue. Shares of NGA were up over 20% on this deal announcement this morning. And now they're up only 4%. So you have a huge buying opportunity um, if this is one you missed out on, uh, as it has pulled back significantly with the market this morning. Um, this is one I've liked since the rumor started. And I like even more now that we have the deal in hand and I do own shares of NGA. Next stock on... All right. Sorry about that. Just wanted to celebrate that NGA as we can see it taking off there. Go ahead, Chris, get into the next headline for us. All right. So next up we have FRXU. So this is Forest Road Acquisition. This is one we covered on our very first show. This is the Shack SPAC. Um, this one is finally live. You can buy units now as FRXU. And the big thing behind the headline, so along with Shack being attached to this, there's three former Disney executives uh, leading this SPAC, and they're targeting the media industry. So this is one that I've called out for people to watch for quite a while. Um, and now that it is it is live, I want to remind people, FRXU, Forest Road Acquisition. And then some of the most highly anticipated SPACs, IPOD, IPOE, and IPOF. So those are from Chamath. These are set to split and trade as common shares and warrants today, which will make them more accessible across all the major exchanges. Before, um, you could only buy these as the units on certain brokers, and now everyone will have access to those. Of course, we know that IPOA became Virgin Galactic. IPOB is currently working on merging with Opendoor, and IPOC has announced a deal as well. 
Um, so these are highly anticipated with the, the so-called king of SPACs being behind these. Um, so those should open for trading anytime today. And then Nikola, NKLA, one of the most covered former SPACs, uh, shares are down significantly today. They announced a revised deal with General Motors. So General Motors will supply the fuel cell systems to Nikola, but this does not include equity. So the previous deal in September was General Motors was going to invest $2 billion for an 11% stake in the company. The revised deal does not include that equity stake. And then also we have a huge share lock of expiration happening tomorrow with former CEO Trevor Milton being able to sell a significant amount of shares. And Nicola did announce insider transactions this morning with shareholders also announcing the sale of stock. So this one got hit hard and it may be hit harder even tomorrow. Uh, symbol QS, QuantumScape, their deal is done. This was formerly KCAC, Kensington. This is the battery company backed by Bill Gates that we have talked about in headlines several times. That stock rocketed higher on Friday, and it is up again today, hitting new highs. This morning, it hit as high as 52.80. And for comparison, DraftKings is around $50, which is one of the best performing former SPACs of the year. So if this one stays higher, this may end up being one of the top five SPACs of 2020. We called out that when it was KCIC, that this deal, when it would get done, the stock would probably go higher. So hopefully some people were able to get into that name. As you see, it is it is up again. And then we have one of our favorites to talk about, HYLN. That's Hillion. Stock is falling big today. So warrant dilution was announced last week. And now it's also trading down in sympathy with Nikola as it is in that same industry. So this one down big today and you have a possible buying opportunity around that $20 mark if you missed out on getting this one before. One of the new SPACs announced last week. So again, not open for trading yet, but I want to put on everyone's radar. So go ahead and write this one down. Symbol MRAC. This is Marquee Rain Acquisition. So they are targeting uh, media and telecommunications. So they have Crane Kenny, the pre uh, president of business operations for the Chicago Cubs, and also Thomas Ricketts, who is the, the executive chairman of the Cubs, attached to the SPAC. And then other advisors also include Thomas Freston, who is the former CEO of Viacom and MTV, and Matt Maloney, the founder and CEO of Grubhub. So you, so you have two people heavily involved in the sports market with the Chicago Cubs. And then you also have someone involved with media. And then you have that founder and CEO of Grubhub, a company that was able to scale its operations. So I think these are strong names attached to this one. It's not open for trading yet, but when it is, I think that's one that will see significant uh, investment from people. And then a reminder of some key dates uh, to get through headlines today. So tomorrow, symbol GMHI, the Gore SPAC will be voting on that merger with Luminar, a LIDAR company. So this is one that's definitely going to be heavily traded today and tomorrow um, before that deal goes through. And we could see a possible run up just like we saw with QuantumScape QS after that deal went through. And then the other one to watch next week. So next Monday or next Tuesday, the vote will be for a symbol TRNE, that's Trine. They are voting on desktop metal merger. That's one we talked about on last week's show. It's the 3D manufacturing, um, very disruptive market. And this is one that I think, you know, isn't a huge, uh, you know, electric vehicle play that's getting the attention. But I think once this deal is complete, you're going to see some analysts start to give target prices and you're going to start to see some funds add this to their uh, fund, maybe even ARC, as this is a disruptive market going forward and they are the key player there. So that's it for headlines today, Mitch. As you guys can see, there's a reason why we have Chris. It's definitely to bring us the news, bring us the headlines, and a lot of a lot of movement today. As you guys have been seeing, that NGA really a rocket, man. I mean, this is one that we mentioned last week, and this is why you guys got to stick with the SPAC show. Hit the subscribe, hit the like below. If you have some friends that like some SPACs, and you guys are talking about it, let them know about the show. Time to come on by and get some information, talk with others about SPACs, and let, let's let's really create a family here that can make some great investments on this play.
So let's go ahead and let's get into some of our segment here. Let's get into the watch list here. So let's go ahead and start it up. All right, guys, we're going to pull up the watch list here to check out what we got moving on here. I definitely need to take off this GameStop, but I'll take that off at the, at, at the end of this. As you guys can see, I was watching that this morning. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get into what's moving and what's up. So, all right, so if we go into this GMHI, the one we just talked about, definitely up 10%. And then following right behind it, we got that NGA. Um, you know, th these are two tickers that we just covered, so I, I won't go too in depth in these. But definitely, as you can tell, uh, leading on the day uh, in the in our SPAC watch list. Let's go ahead and let's get into another one here. IPOB. I want to take a look at this one on the chart. Let's take a look at the 15 minutes. See how it's doing today. See how it's doing on the daily. So if we see. You know, we, we've kind of getting back up there to that $24 level, which is going to be very important. Um, I think you got to go ahead and see if we can get back above 2350s. You know, you kind of got this downward trend line here starting to build. I, I'm, I'll be looking for another attempt up there to the 23 to see if it can get up there and start holding with some volume, then maybe make an attempt to run towards this 24. Um, do you got any uh, news or anything you want to add on IPOB here, Chris? So IPOB, the key date is December 17th. That will be that merger date when they vote on this deal. Um, so we have over two weeks. So you could see this one, you know, just kind of trading, you know, up and down until we kind of break some of those patterns. Um, this was one that was hot out of the gate as it has Chamath attached to it. I think maybe when the merger goes through, it ends up going higher as we get some more clarity on their plans for future growth going ahead. This is one that has been added to Kathy Wood's ARC ETFs, and I think it's going to get some strong analyst support and uh, fund involvement as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the things is with these, you definitely got to stick to the catalyst and know the story. So definitely just keep your eye on it and use Benzinga Pro if you guys want real-time alerts. All right, so let's go ahead and get into here. Let's get into another one. I'm going to pull up Benzinga Pro here. Well, let's do VGAC.U uh, here. Um, I have the U. I think it's also trading uh, the regular stock now. Um, this is one that I'm definitely keeping an eye on. Um, this is one that I've been watching uh, ever since. Really, you know, everyone's been watching space and, and how uh, kind of how that one performed. But really, I'm looking for the next one. And I, and I like this one, you know, I, I wanted to get this one underneath that $10 pricing. Um, and, and this is why I like to do this because on announcement, you know, it's back here in October, uh, you could have got it maybe in the 980 area, 990 area, could have risked maybe till it's the 950, risk about 50 cents, right? Then maybe look to make a, a two to one or a four to one return. That's what I usually like doing guys. So if it's a 50 cent risk, then we're looking for essentially we'd be looking for that times two. So a dollar in reward, or let's say let's shoot for the four to one, a $2 reward. So you'd be looking for a move in towards that $12. And as you can see, you get those pops often in these specs. That's kind of the move I really like. I, I think you got to really try to find some kind of reward with these, something, some pattern that you see consistent. And if you can see, you know, we got that pop already. And, and then once we get that pop, you know, you'll see kind of that, retracement where support is going to try to hold here uh, near that $11 price point. I would like to see this one maybe try to crack underneath that 11, get towards that 1080, see if we get some volume and some catalyst to come in this one. This one was moving when space was moving up here at $12. So let's see what happens to space also with this one. Chris, anything to add on this one? Yeah. So uh, VG, it does trade now the common shares, VGAC. <laughs> Um, which is going to give this one some more attention. So again, this is the um, Virgin Group, Richard Branson SPAC. This is one that's been on our watch list from the start, even when it was those units. Um, I like the common shares are now about 1039. So they're, you know, not that high above that $10 mark, which is so important because it cuts your risk. This is a name now being tied to electric vehicles. So before they kind of, you know, just said they were going to enter one of those Virgin Group uh, um, segments that they already are in, but they're kind of circling and now been rumored with electric vehicles. So now you have the chance to get in one of these possible EV SPACs under $11. And those ones, as you've seen with CIIC and GA Today, 
as soon as those deals are announced, they rocket higher, which we're going to get to in our middle segment today. But I, I love VGAC here. Um, I like Branson being attached to it. And I like the share price being under $11 for those common shares. All right, traders, let's go ahead and take a second to recognize the traders that are in our chat rooms. Like we, like always, we like to be active. So let's say hi to some of the people in the chat here. How, how we doing? We got Future Legend. We got Joe talking about AMCI. So looks like we need to add that one to our watch list. Let's go ahead and do that. AMCI. I'll go ahead and I'll make sure that we touch that one next. And let's go ahead and keep going. We got Adam Blunk in the house, Sheriff, Chase, Sky5, Jump. I like it. We're jumping, guys. We got Johan, Marty, Harrison, Eric. How are we doing, guys? It's great to see you guys in the chat. Definitely say hello if you're new and hit the subscribe below. Let's go ahead and keep going here. Let's get into that one that uh, let's get into that one that you know was just mentioned here in the chat. Um, let's AMCI. It's up actually 13%. Uh, what do you know about this one, Chris? So I don't know this one as well. Um, so we're going to need to take a look at this one. Um, Ooh, pulling take, up let's throw let's here. take a look here. All right, guys. So wh what do we got here? We got an early, early stage blank check company. Let us know by pro. And let's take a look at the chart. Charts don't lie, right? So let's take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the 15-minute chart here. So as you can see, hung out near that ten dollars. It didn't even come near that that ten dollar price point. You know, you had this one day that it dipped here, but this one's really holding strong. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to see is when it pops above that ten dollars. This was that first pop over eleven, and if it can hold two days above that ten dollars and not retrace, that's what I'm trying to see here. And you can see that two day kind of hold here, and then we got the pop again. It got over that level. And now there seems to be some volume really juicing in here um, near this $12 price point. So I think that's really where you're going to see the majority of the volume now. So let's see if this one can continue on up. But uh, I guess we're going to have to do a little bit more research on this one. So thank you. Thank you for uh, putting that one out there, Joe. I want to definitely give a shout out to Joe. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and let's keep working here with our watch list. Let's pull it up here right quick. SPACs attack. All right, guys. So one of the things that I want to touch, there's one more stock I want to get into here. Um, this is a stock that I want to just keep on everyone's radar. It's on my radar, so I want to bring it up. It's SEAH. Um, this is one that just started moving. I think you got to keep an eye on it because it's starting to do what I always talk about, and which is the pattern that I like, guys. So if if we can look for this pattern, guys, what we need to do is we need to see multiple days hold above that ten dollar price point, and then see if the volume or a catalyst follows it to really get that drive. Okay, so this is one that I'm looking at S E A h here and let's see if it can really start driving on up there. As you can see, we've made this move past the ten dollars. Now we've gotten one whole day. Now I want to see this next day close and let it be above this like 1015 pricing. And you know, I might get interested in getting in this one. So I'm going to keep this one on watch for sure. All right, let's go ahead and get back into our watch list here. So Chris, what anything you want to go ahead and take a look here? Anything on your radar? No, I mean you see a couple of the specs that we've covered, uh, you know, getting hit hard today. Um, Hillion, you see Fisker, FSR down, um, MP Materials, which someone mentioned in the chat. Um, you know, these are ones, again, that I like long term. And if you're the type of person who, you know, looks for the buying opportunities, you know, Hillion, this might be the cheapest you get it um, going forward, because as soon as they start announcing new deals, which I believe is the catalyst coming, I think that one rockets higher. Um, MP Materials, we interviewed the CEO. That's a company that's needed by EV companies, and it's the thing behind the thing. So you have a buying opportunity for the long term there. Um, I like SDAH, which you just hit on. So that's a sports SPAC. Um, it did just split its units into common shares and warrants recently. It's going to get some more attention, and it has strong names attached to it that you know were former executives in the sports uh, professional teams market. Um, so that's one I like there on our watch list as well. All right, time to get to some of the best part of the day. It's time to get to that SPACs unlock time.
All right, Trader. So one of the things that we notice is that there's always rumors going on in the SPAC world. So we want to go ahead and bring you these rumors first so that you can be the one to go ahead and do the research, make that informed trade, and maybe get one of these before it spikes. You know, a lot of times you'll hear us talk about these SPACs on the pre-market prep show. That's a show that goes on every single morning from 8 to 9 a.m. And the real important part about this is that, you know, a lot of times that you will, you'll hear it on that show. It's probably a little late, you know, and you guys got to come here and hear the rumors. So hit the subscribe below and let's get into it, Chris. What are the rumors out there? Yeah, so guys, we saw NGA, I mean, com completely rocket higher this morning. Obviously, it's been dipped back now. But this was one that was announced over a month ago. It started with the rumors. And if you pay attention to some of these rumors, you have a good chance to get in before the deal is announced and then lock in some of those gains. So again, you could get in one of these names before they announce their deal. And then when it announces the deal, you could sell part of your position take that immediate profit and let the rest run and play with the house's money. So again, these are all just rumors, not guaranteed to happen, but we want to cover some today. Um, and we'll pull up some of the charts too, and maybe some of the volume moves and the movement higher speaks to those rumors. So one of the first ones we talked about was RBAC. So this is Redbird. Their rumor is that they're buying a stake in Fenway Sports Group which is the owner of the Boston Red Sox in Major League Baseball, Liverpool in the English Premier League uh, soccer team. And then they also own a racing team and other assets. So sports teams have been selling at record valuations. Red Sox have strong brand awareness and Liverpool as well. They also have some media assets with their uh, regional sports channel. Um, you know, this is one I've liked for a while. Again, that deal's been rumored for a while, but it hasn't been announced yet. I think this gets done and I think it's going to be traded higher because people love investing in sports teams because there aren't a lot of public opportunities to invest. If you're a Red Sox fan, you want to own part of the company. If you're a baseball fan, you want to own part of the company. Same with soccer and Liverpool. Um, you know, so if, as you look at the chart there, so you still have this one trading, you know, around 1050. You have a great opportunity to get in here you know, not significantly higher than that $10 level. So this is one I've liked from the start with those rumors and I like going forward. Um, do you have, you have volume on there as well? So we see a little bit at the bottom there, some of those um, movements with the rumors circulating. I know a couple of days ago, there was another article put out that it looks like this deal is, you know, going to be, be announced any time. Um, so this is one definitely for you guys to watch. And then uh, one we've talked about a lot, PSTH. So this is Bill Ackman's SPAC. This is the largest SPAC. The rumors continue to point to Stripe, which is an online payments company. So even though no deal is announced and most of the rumors have been shut down, um, Airbnb, Bloomberg, all the, all, the, all the research seems to point back to Stripe being the uh, target company and getting this deal done. Um, and I think, you know, in the long run, there is so much money in this back that they have to target a huge unicorn. And I think Stripe is one of only a few companies that really fits that um, segment. So, you know, you see significant volume going into this one. And, you know, this is one I've liked for a long time. Uh, you know, what can you tell me about that chart there, Mitch? Yeah, so PSTH, you know, I, I've, I've also heard that rumor, you know, with Stripe. And uh, I actually know a kind of a closer relationship with Stripe. I've, I've used the platform and uh, my fiance uses the, the platform with their, their job. So it's, it's a thing behind a thing. A lot of the time, the payment, the online payment, you know, you've seen the move in PayPal and Square. So that, that's where kind of the interest really comes from. And let's take a look at the chart here. You know, you, you've been definitely seeing this one has some runs up, but I, I see this big volume bar here. Um, and this big volume bar came in today. So one of the things I definitely want to pay attention to now is if that was kind of the sell sell the moment right there is a, a big volume rejection from this $27 level. So to me, the, the bulls will be stuck there at that 27. It would need to get above that 27 to really look bullish to me. But if not, it might be just doing a pullback. It might be getting a pullback and then always look for the catalyst to get the run here. All right, Chris, let's go ahead and get into another one here. Yeah. So then we have symbol G I K. Uh, this is one that's been attached to an electric vehicle name called Lightning E-Motors. 
um, as the rumored target. So again, this would be an EV play. They're in the fleet vehicle and cargo van market. So again, we've seen a couple uh, companies target that, NGA announced today. Um, so again, this is one where if that deal is announced, you know, you could see movement significantly higher. Over the past week, it has already started to trade up um, on those rumors. So we'll see how much um, of a movement we get there if that's announced. Um, and then another one is Quell, Q-E-L-L. -L. So Quell Acquisition. This is one that's been rumored for a while. Uh, people, you know, kind of digging behind the scenes. So one of the board members on this SPAC is Ryan Popple, and he is also a director at Proterra, which is an electric bus company. So people seem to think that, you know, this, this SPAC was put in place to take Proterra public. Um, again, those rumors have been out for a while. Um, it hasn't been confirmed. Uh, this is an electric bus company that has sold over a thousand battery electric transit buses in North America, though. So you have one of the market leaders that could be coming public via a SPAC. And again, in that EV market, this is the type of name that when the deal is announced will rocket higher based on the last couple of deals that have been announced in the sector. So this is one I think people definitely need to watch. And then the other electric vehicle SPAC rumor we have is FIII, which is rumored to be taking electric last mile public. This is another EV play. Um, I don't know a ton about this company, but you know that's another one where if that deal is announced, um, you could see significant uh, price going higher on that announcement. Um, so you know it's important to pay attention to some of these rumors. Um, you know, take them all with a grain of salt, but also, you know, you want to be in some of these names before the rest of people get into them. Because as you saw with NGA this morning, it rocketed much higher and then also started to sell off as some people took profits because they were in at a much lower price point and they aren't afraid, you know, to sell some and take those profits. Um, and then the other rumors I have here, we already talked about uh, VGAC Virgin. We also have BFT. Uh, which is rumored to be taking PaySafe, another online payment solution company, public. Um, so that's one to keep an eye on. Again, we talked about PSTH with Stripe. With BFT, you have PaySafe being the rumored target. Um, so this is one to put on your watch list as it sits, you know, right around there at 1050. Um, it hasn't traded significantly higher since the SPAC went public, um, but you do see it, you know, trading, you know, above the 1020 mark there. Um, you know, for the past couple of weeks since some of those rumors circulated. And then the last one that I'll touch on here, this one, again, not from a major news publication, but from some of the chatter on Twitter, symbol FST. This is fast acquisition. Uh, it's, they are targeting the restaurant industry. Um, their rumors are starting to circulate about names like and Pizza and Whataburger um, you know, again, complete rumors. People have even thrown out, you know, five guys as a target. This is trading below $10. So as we've talked about SPAC arbitrage before, you have the opportunity to buy in below 10, you know, capture that gain. If you don't like the announced deal, you can, you know, get rid of your shares at that $10 price point. Um, you know, great low risk buying opportunity. So the people behind this company, it's led by Sandy Beal, who co-founded Ruby Tuesday. Uh, the chairman, Kevin Reddy, also held executive roles at Noodles and & Company and Chipotle. Um, so you have some people, you know, in the restaurant industry, um, you know, who I think are going to find a good target, a growing, you know, probably fast casual chain, something that fits the demographics today of the, you know, delivery, online orders, um, you know, so not necessarily the sit down restaurant. Um, so I think this is one worth watching because, again, there aren't a ton of targets. Um, in that market. But if they pick the right one, you have significant opportunity below $10 here. And that's it right now for all the rumors I'm seeing, Mitch. So anything to add to any of those charts there? No, definitely. You know, one thing I always talk about is if you want to know the rumors and you want to be first, like always, guys, Benzinga Pro, real-time alerts, I'm going to let you know that that's what I check every single morning. So definitely uh, get your free two-week trial, uh, two trial if you haven't had it yet. No credit card needed. It's going to be in the description below. So let's go ahead and let's get further on here. 
got some other things. Let's get into ticker time, guys. So one of the things I definitely want to do is get into the tickers that you guys want in the chat. So let's go ahead, put the tickers in the chat. Let's see what we can get into here. I know we got some already mentioned, so I, I want to get into some of these. I, Joe, and he's been slamming for us to touch this THCB one. Um, so definitely going to go ahead and get into this one. Let's go ahead and pull it up on our Benzinga Pro here. That's Johan. Let's pull him up here. All right, so we got Tuscan Holdings. All right, let's take a look at this one on the chart here, guys. All right, so let's put everyone put your tickets in the chat. Put your tickets in the chat. It's ticket time, guys. All right, you guys can see it going up there. You got one drive up, two drive, three drive, and then you kind of have this little flag breakout here on the 25th. You get another drive up, get some get some resistance here. Some big resistance build up here at the 3, 1375. Every time it comes up here, really rejects that level. So I think you need to see if our support is going to hold here. You know, if it breaks through this $12 level and heads down towards this 1150, it'd be kind of worry, worrisome for me. So what I want to see is a big volume pop here north, uh, near that $12, get back above 1250 and attempt to get a strong volume push at the 1350 mark here. That's going to be very vital for this one. Anything you want to add to this one, Chris? So this one's been rumored uh, Microvast. It's a battery company. Um, I have not seen a deal announcement on this one. Um, that is a company, yeah, that I like going forward. Um, it looks like it was announced, actually. Um you know, battery is the hot sector within the electric vehicles, um, the thing behind the thing. They power a couple bus companies over in China, so they do have some sales and experience. Um, yeah, th this is one, you know, that could be a, a good winner once that deal is complete. All right, guys, we always want to recognize some new members in our chat. So we got Marty G here. Marty G with the MP Dow movement. Let's take a look. Let's find out. All right, so let's go ahead and let's pull up MP. MP is actually on our watch list, so it makes it nice and easy. We just click on it, pull it on up here. Let's see this chart. You know, one of the things is when we had this stock on the show, Marty, I don't know if you watched it, but definitely look in our playlist down below. You can see that when we had the interview on here, we, we, we got this one below 16. You know, that, that was the price I was really watching. If you guys hear me talk about this, I mentioned this before on that show, was that 16 price point. If we can get above it, hold some volume. And then you see what ended up happening was it popped right here above the 16, came back, and look how it held it. It held it perfectly here, guys. Held it perfectly here multiple times, and that started the rip. Then the volume came. Now we've gotten that kind of one drive. That second drive, a third drive, now you're getting this big pullback towards support. You need to see volume come in and test this 23. This $23 level is going to be so vital. If it can get back up there to that 23, it's going to need volume to really drive it up there to that 25. But this one definitely went on a drive. So what I do is I look for pullbacks. I'm not trying to buy into these high rips so that I get caught on a support test. All right, let's go ahead and keep going here in the chat. Got a couple of them in the chat. So, look, we got a new one also here. I haven't seen this uh, name here. Patrice Floyd Jr. sold LCA option. So let's go ahead and take a look at LCA here. LCA is definitely one that's on a lot of people's radars with the gambling. Uh, we talked about this one with the bets ETF and kind of all the gambling stocks. But as you can see, um, this one has made a turnaround. Um, it's really started to really drive from this $15 price area. And it's all about where the support is on this stock. I think you've got to be looking towards uh, closer towards this $18 price point for pullbacks to get maybe back up there to that $22 level. But in the end, I do think uh, for the long run of gambling, um, you know, you are going to see an improved kind of industry over the next couple of years as we get more and more states to become not not legal, but actually get into the sports uh, betting industries and you'll see state by state. All right, let's keep going here. We got uh, one that everyone's talking about. This is one that uh, I saw was mentioned often by my man, Chris here, FUV, FUV. 
So what what's up with FUV, Chris? So FUV, electric vehicle player, um, they make the smaller uh, size three-wheel vehicles. And the thing I pointed out on the show before that I like about them is they have some deals with some cities, um, municipalities to do vehicles, you know, for the city to get around. So Orlando was the big one announced. If you don't have Benzinga Pro, you probably did not see that headline right away, but we had it out first thing that morning. And then it did trade higher. So this one has ran quite a bit higher along with all the electric vehicle names. They had a share offering announced as well um, at a price of $15.25. So, you know, right now it's trading below that share offering amount, which was announced last Tuesday. So you actually have the opportunity to get in below that offering. Um, This is one I like long term. I think it's kind of a, a speculative EV play. Um, I like it. They have actual sales. They have, you know, production. Um, you know, I like this one going forward. And I think uh, on this pullback here, it, it's worth taking a look. Yeah, definitely. You know, one of the things you can definitely see from this chart is the bounce off of that $12 level. You know, you, you got this drive here that came up and where did it hold? $12, right? So always look left, guys. This is why I always want to look left. So this is what I call by multiple levels of support. So this is one level support. Let's go up to the next level. So you see a drive up, right? It gets to 16, comes back to the $14 level, holds multiple times there, and then rips as it held, as it holds at 12, gets back above 14, gets some volume, and rips out again. So then we see a pullback towards this $14 level. That's one support, right? When it cracks below it, it goes down to the next level of support, $12. So now we got to see if those two levels are going to hold and we're going to get a volume push back above that 14. I say keep that on watch. And if it gets back above 14, maybe you get the bulls to take control and get this back up there to that $20 level. All right, guys, let's go ahead and keep going in the chat, seeing a whole bunch of tickers. Like always, guys, hit the like, hit the subscribe below. Let's keep it moving. All right, so I've seen a couple of QS talk. We talked about that one, uh, Jeannie. So definitely take a look back if you guys want to talk more about that one. Let's get into SPE. SPE. Oh, SBE. My bad. Let's get into SBE. I know this one's been pulling back, and a lot of people have this one on watch, just with Fisker also. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this one. But Mob Scene, thank you for putting this one in the chat. Let's go. All right, so do you want to mention anything about this one, Chris, while I pull it up, pull a chart up here? Yeah, so SBE merging with ChargePoint, charging infrastructure play. Um, This is one I've owned. I've mentioned several times here. Um, You know, I mentioned it election night as a Biden play. Um, I like it. I did sell some at the top there around the $40 mark. Um, So you have seen a pullback. But again, this is going to be a good long-term play. They are one of the largest charging infrastructure companies. They're a peer play on that thing behind the thing. So as electric vehicle sales increase across the U.S., this is the company that's going to benefit the most. So instead of chasing Tesla, Fisker, GM, Ford, and all the companies, you can buy SBE and you can kind of get exposure to all of them as you're going to get that charging infrastructure. They have some deals in place with some companies and they're also working on bringing uh, charging stations to people's houses um, and to their fleet customers. So again, this is one I like long term. I sold part of my stake, but I still have some running and I'll continue to hold. Um, We are waiting to see a deal announcement on what date they will vote. And this is one that could trade heavily around that date when it is announced. And then as it changes tickers to charge point and is really, you know, signified as a charging company, it could rocket higher again. So I would not count this one out. Definitely, guys. Keep it on watch. Let's go ahead and continue on moving here. I want to get to a couple more before we get on out of here. So we got another new face here. We got Mylan Star asking about Jemiah or, or how I like to call it, you know. Everyone knows this pun. Jumanji. Jumanji, guys. <laughs> you guys don't know the Jumanji stock? Let's pull it up here. Chris, do you know anything about Jumanji? I do. So Jemaya is one of my favorite stocks. I own this one. I bought in, you know, way down from where it is. I'm up over 100%. Um, this one is the peer play on African e-commerce. It's the Amazon of Africa. They own a logistics business. They own a pay business. So you can compare them to you know, eBay slash PayPal. You can compare them to Alibaba, um, Mercado Libra. 
Um, Citron, which is a short seller, they were previously short and they changed their mind and they now have a hundred dollar price target on this name. It's also one that's been getting love on CNBC um, from Stephen Weiss, who we are working on getting an interview with for Benzinga to hear more of his thoughts. So I just wrote an article about this. They had a presentation last week. And one of the things in that presentation that I think people you know, may have missed is they actually have talked about in the future spinning off the logistics business and the pay business. If that happens, this one could be a huge rocket. Those are two, you know, underlying businesses that on their own could trade with higher multiples um, and really get people exposure to the growing e-com business in Africa. So again, one stock, three huge businesses. It's the peer play on Africa. As long as we're talking about Jumaya, go ahead and take a look at Ozon, O-Z-O-N, which is the Russian e-com play. Again, emerging markets, guys. These are the ones I like. Um, you know, because you have a huge opportunity as internet penetration grows, as e-com grows in those markets. I think they're worth taking a look and holding small exposure to some of these international names in your portfolio. So I love Jumaya going forward. Yeah, you guys, there's a reason why I got Chris here, guys. So let's go ahead and let's get into two more. I know Chris, uh, Chase has been really animate trying to get a stock in here. Let's get him in here. SNDL, Chase, I got you. I see you in the chat. You're recognized, my man. Let's go ahead. SNDL here. So this is a cannabis one, I believe, Mitch. And I actually owned this one before. Um, a penny stock. Uh, looks like it's up higher today with all the um, cannabis names uh, with some new legislation possibly in the work. Um, this one IPO'd, if I'm not mistaken, um, last year or the year before. Um, and it was double digits at one point. And uh has traded down significantly since then. Um, you know, I like this one if they can, you know, kind of turn or turn things around here, but you do see that huge movement up and those huge volume spikes there. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we have Benzinga Pro is to help us out here. You know, we can't always know what's moving or why it's moving. So one of the things you can do is you can pull up the stock and look at the why it's moving. We actually put out these, we call them the whims. Uh, there's a special product here. Shares of several cannabis companies are trading higher amid the expectation that the U.S. House of Representatives will conduct a vote regarding the federal ban on cannabis in the near term. Big, big, big move. You know, I'm sure you're going to see a bunch of uh, cannabis stocks move on this. It's not only going to be these. You can always look up at the peers to find some of these OTC names. But I would also look at some some of the big names. Like I, I saw mentioned in the chat, APHA, how, how these stocks are reacting. And then we'll definitely take a look at this. You know, um, you, you saw some other uh, looks like there's some news on this one, too, about Sweetwater Brewing Company. I'm going to have to check that one out too. Uh, ACB, uh, you can take a look into, as you can see, up on the day, 4%. 4 if you went to the peers, you can find some other plays. Look at this GWPH. I know I've heard about this one before. Look at this one ripping. So definitely a, a lot of plays in cannabis making moves. All right, guys. So that's going to probably be it today, guys. I'm so happy that we got to get to some of these tickers. Like always, there's always tickers that we need to go ahead and take a look at. So leave in the comments below if you guys want to go over a stock or one of these SPACs tomorrow. Because what we'll do is we'll definitely look in the comments every single day and go ahead and touch those stocks because the show is about you guys. So definitely hit the like, hit the below. Give my man Chris some some likes some follows on twitter you guys can follow him in the description below you'll find his twitter and let's keep it going with the specs chris anything you want to go ahead and leave off with yeah so guys uh you know no guests today but wanted to tell everyone we have a guest on tomorrow's show one of our guests from last week so will hershey he's with round hill investments so last week we talked about the bets etf the sports betting one Tomorrow, we're going to dive into the other Round Hill ETF, so symbol N-E-R-D. This is a video game esports peer play ETF. So we're going to be talking video game stocks tomorrow and esports, kind of get some thoughts on the overall industry. We're going to hit on you know some recent IPOs, CRSR and U, maybe talk the Roblox IPO and see what else we can talk about. So uh, definitely tune in to tomorrow's show. And if you guys have any questions or any gaming stocks you want covered, 
drop them in the chat or hit one of us up on Twitter and we'll try to get to those. So again, thanks everyone. All right, guys. And like every time, hit the subscribe, the bell below to get notified as soon as we go live. And like always, guys, when the SPACs, they freaking attack, man.